Hello everyone. I am Dr. Gyanada and today we are going to learn about angina pectoris. So uh, let us start with the lecture. What is exactly meant by angina pectoris? Angina pectoris is chest discomfort and radiating pain as a result of ischemia. What is meant by ischemia? Ischemia forms the basis of angina pectoris. Ischemia is an imbalance in oxygen demand and supply of myocardium. Okay, means uh, as you all know that heart is made up of myocardium. The muscle of the heart is known as myocardium. Heart supplies blood to our whole body. But uh, the heart also requires blood in order to bring about its pumping action. And the two coronary arteries which originate from aorta, they supply the blood to the myocardium that is the muscle of the heart. And when there is an imbalance in between the oxygen demand of myocardium and the supply of blood to the myocardium, that particular condition is termed as ischemia. Okay, um, and you must remember that there is not just an imbalance of oxygen demand and supply. There is an imbalance also in the nutrient demand and supply of myocardium because when the blood supply to a certain portion of the myocardium is obstructed, then that portion remains devoid of oxygen as well as nutrients. Plus, one more thing happens when the blood supply to that particular area is hampered. That is, uh, there is decreased washout of the metabolic waste products from that portion of myocardium. And so, if the ischemia continues for a certain duration of time, then it may lead to death of that myocardium, which is being devoid of uh, blood supply. And that death is known as, or necrosis is known as infarction. Okay, so uh, after ischemia, the patient may land into infarction that is the death of myocardium. So angina pectoris is basically a warning sign in order to prevent the patient from landing into infarction stage. Okay, angina particular means crushing or tightening pain and pectoris as the name suggests indicates the pectoral region or the chest region. So a crushing kind of pain in the chest region or chest discomfort is termed as angina pectoris. Angina is divided into three types. The first one is chronic stable angina. The second one is the prince metal angina, which is also known as variant angina. And the third one is unstable angina. Okay. First of all, let's see what is meant by ischemic heart diseases. Ischemic heart diseases are the heart diseases or the cardiac diseases, which are as a result of ischemia means the basic underlying pathology in all these diseases is ischemia. It consists of angina, it consists of myocardial infarction and it also consists of sudden cardiac death. Okay, so IHD or ischemic heart disease is defined as myocardial impairment due to imbalance between coronary blood flow and requirement. That is the requirement, uh, the imbalance in between the requirement of the myocardium and the coronary blood flow to that particular part of myocardium. Okay. The another uh, definition of IHD is it is a group of clinical pathological conditions means it is a group of conditions or a syndrome or multiple uh, symptoms or different kind of symptoms arise because of ischemia. So it is a group of clinical pathological conditions which occur due to imbalance in between oxygen and nutrient supply and demand of myocardium. Okay, so this is the basic concept of ischemic heart diseases out of which one of the IHD or ischemic heart disease is angina pectoris which we are going to study in detail today. Okay, so uh, the main reason or the main underlying cause for ischemia is most of the times atheromatous plaque. You must have heard about atherosclerosis which is a condition in which there is deposition of plaque that is fibro fatty material in the intima that is the innermost layer of arteries okay uh, or you may say in this case the coronary arteries the plaques are basically of 
two types. They could be stable plaques or they could be unstable or vulnerable plaques. So what is the exact difference in between stable and unstable or vulnerable plaques? This stable plaque uh, is formed because of deposition of fibro fatty material in the intima of coronary arteries. But it has got a thick fibrous cap. It consists of smooth muscle cells and collagen fibers. But as you can see, it is thick in nature. Okay, it consists of less amount of foam cells that is lipid containing cells. It consists of less number of macrophages and because of that, this particular plaque is stable. Okay, it is not um, vulnerable to any kind of injury or any kind of fissuring or rupture. Okay, so in that way, it is known as a stable plaque. It, uh, it is stable and that's why it obstructs the lumen of the coronary artery, but stably, you can say, okay, it is not undergoing any dynamic changes and that's why it is termed as stable plaque. As against that, the vulnerable or unstable plaques consist of more amount of lipid cells or foam cells. They consist of more amount of macrophages, which are actively engaged in eating up the proteinaceous material and they consist of a thin fibrous cap. Okay, you can see here there is a thick fibrous cap, but in this case it is a thin fibrous cap. So they are more vulnerable to injuries and, and uh, may undergo rupture or fissuring easily. And whenever these plaques undergo rupture due to uh, blood flow or because of the flow of blood with the pressure flowing through it, so when they undergo any kind of injury, what happens? This inside lipid core, which is thrombogenic in nature, means which is actively engaged in platelet aggregation, it gets exposed. And as soon as this uh, part, that is the lipid core of this particular plaque gets exposed, the platelet aggregation begins. That is platelets start aggregating or accumulating over here. And due to platelet aggregation and fibrin formation, there is a thrombus formation uh, in this particular kind of plaque after injury. Okay, so it is a uh, it is a natural response of the body, but because of that, what happens? There is a thrombus formation, and this thrombus could actually occlude the complete lumen of coronary artery, stopping the complete blood supply to the further part of myocardium where this particular coronary artery is supplying. And what will happen if the complete blood flow to a certain part of the myocardium is stopped? It will, uh, it will remain devoid of uh, oxygen and nutrients. Furthermore, uh, the metabolic wastes which, are, which would be available in that part of myocardium will not be washed up. And because of that, if this occlusion continues for a certain duration of time, that further myocardium may land into necrosis or infarction stage. Okay, but here we are going to study the uh, stage which is previous or uh, before, which occurs before the infarction stage, that is the angina. Okay, which is a clinical manifestation uh, of ischemic condition. Okay, this particular uh, myocardial muscle which lies further in the um, further to that of the blood supply of that particular coronary artery it suffers from ischemia and that ischemia is presented or manifested as angina okay this is another picture depicting the normal coronary artery and the uh, lipid deposit or the plaque deposition in the artery which is you can see the obstructing or narrowing the lumen of the coronary artery okay now let us see one by one the types of angina the first type is chronic stable angina okay as the name suggests it has got stable plaque as the basic underlying pathology it develops when more than 70 percent of the luminal diameter of coronary artery is reduced now see, when more than 70% of the luminal diameter is reduced, uh, the heart can work well in uh, whatever 25 to 30% of blood supply it is getting, but at rest, whenever the person undergoes any kind of exertion or exercise, immediately what happens, the blood supply, that is the 25 to 30% of blood supply that is the my that myocardium is receiving, it becomes uh, insufficient. 
means the demand of that myocardium is more but the supply gets decreased so what is what is happening over here there is an imbalance in between the oxygen or nutrient demand of that myocardium as against the supply of uh, the blood or the oxygen and nutrients so um, when the lumen is obstructed up to 70% and this type of person undergoes some kind of exertional activity or emotional crisis then uh, the blood supply received is decreased means uh, that is not enough in order to carry out the function of the heart okay so what are the clinical features of chronic stable angina there is a retro sternal chest pain the person cannot pinpoint with the fingertip that i am feeling the pain here or here there is a vague kind of retro sternal chest pain there is tightness in the chest or discomfort which is radiating the pain radiates to left or right shoulder neck jaw and even arms okay and these symptoms are associated with diaphoresis that is excessive sweating nausea anxiety this um, episodes of chronic stable angina they are precipitated by exertion emotional crisis and eating so whenever a person is exerting or exercising the demand of peripheral tissues increases it goes up and in order to supply more blood to the periphery heart starts pumping at a higher pace and with extra force and in order to pump with higher pace and extra force it is also requiring some more amount of nutrients and oxygen in order to bring out that function and as uh, during the exertion the heart rate increases and whenever the heart rate increases the uh, phase which is affected to greater extent is the diastole the systole becomes more that is the cardiac output is increased the heart rate is increased but the diastole the phase of diastole it is decreased so there is less filling of the heart and you must remember that whenever the heart undergoes systole that is contraction at that time the uh, coronary arteries further get constricted to a greater extent and uh, because of that the blood supply to myocardium itself is decreased during systole so the main phase when a uh, heart is receiving blood is the diastole and when uh, a person undergoes exertion plus there is more than 70% luminal obstruction then what happens the uh, heart muscle or the myocardium is made devoid of oxygen and nutrient supply that is it doesn't uh, get the blood in that particular amount and so there is ischemia of that heart muscle which presents in the form of chronic stable angina it uh, the same thing happens in emotional crisis because the sns is activated heart rate is increased and due to eating uh, because of overeating you can say whenever a person overeats the blood flow gets directed towards the git that is gastrointestinal system and gets engaged in the, uh, carrying out the process of digestion and that's why whatever cardiac output is coming out it is not enough uh, to provide supply to the heart muscle itself and because of that the patient may land into chronic stable angina the episode of chronic stable angina is less than 10 to 15 minutes and you must remember that is that it is relieved by rest or if we immediately give him nitrates okay, which are vasodilators um it is depicted by levin sign that is clutching of fist over sternum the pain that is retro sternal pain which is a vague kind of tightness discomfort in the pain uh, the patient shows like this it is termed as levin sign okay and the ecg shows st depression levin sign is important from point of view of mcqs okay now the unstable angina this is the uh, as the name suggest it is the cause or it is the result i'm sorry it is the result of unstable plaque the coronary atherosclerosis with superimposed thrombus on ruptured plaque the plaque plaque gets ruptured which is having thin cap the unstable plaque it gets ruptured and uh, there is platelet aggregation there is thrombus formation and because of that superimposed thrombus formation there is complete occlusion of the coronary artery and it leads to ischemia but you must remember that as against stable angina the pain in this particular unstable angina is accelerating in pattern that is its frequency is increased its duration is also increased uh, we have seen that this stable angina lasts for less than 10 to 15 minutes but in case of unstable angina the pain continues 
okay it goes on increasing in frequency as well as duration it can be caused with minimal exertion or even at rest this is very important unstable angina can occur even at rest angina may occur post mi or post a procedure like angioplasty or cabg and this particular pain of unstable angina is not relieved by rest or nitrates okay this is the thing which uh, differentiates it from stable angina the pain lasts if the pain lasts for 20 to 30 minutes then that person may land into infarction so this is a very crucial period we must immediately diagnose that this is a case of unstable angina and if we treat the patient in these 20 to 30 minutes we can prevent that patient from landing into infarction okay there is a minor line of demarcation in between unstable angina and myocardial infarction so these are the 20 to 30 crucial minutes we are able to see st depression in case of unstable angina okay now the third uh, variant angina or prince metal angina is quite different in case of pathology the pathology doesn't include plaque it may include but the basic pathology which is responsible for prince metal angina is vasospasm the myocardial ischemia secondary to coronary artery vasospasm okay in first two cases there was a plaque which was obstructing the lumen and in this case there is vasospasm this spasm of the arteries which obstructs the blood flow and finally leads to ischemia okay it could be with or without atherosclerosis if there is atherosclerosis the condition is worse but if it is without atherosclerosis it is quite better condition okay but the basic pathology is vasospasm it typically occurs between midnight and 8 am when the temperatures are quite cold okay it is not related to exercise because it may happen at rest it is more common in females and you must remember that typically there is an st segment elevation in prince metal angina okay this is important from point of view of mcqs this spasm usually occurs in right coronary artery okay and uh, this spasm must lead to more than 75% blockage in order to land the patient into prince metal angina and this particular kind of chest pain is also relieved by rest and nitrates like chronic stable angina okay so the treatment strategy for angina is first of all we need to assure the patient if it, if the patient is of chronic stable angina then we can take general measures like lifestyle modification and statins in order to break down the plaques okay statins have got have got excellent results in um, breaking down the plaques okay and or reversing the plaque formation the basic aim of treatment of angina is to balance the cardiac oxygen supply and demand that is we have to deal first of all with ischemia and we must in the, uh, for that reason we must work on heart rate venous return that is the preload contractility and blood pressure of the person blood pressure includes both the preload and afterload okay so what are the uh, main medicines which are used for treating angina the first and most important are beta blockers but um attention must be paid that they must be cardio selective or beta 1 selective beta blockers okay otherwise they may lead to bronchoconstriction like metoprolol atenolol these kind of beta blockers must be used calcium channel blockers like amlodipin verapamil deltiazem they are used beta blockers what they do they decrease the blood pressure they decrease the heart rate they also decrease the uh, demand of oxygen of the myocardium and thus help in reverting back the angina ccbs or calcium channel blockers they also decrease the heart rate that is av conduction uh, they decrease uh, they also dilate the vessels to some extent and decrease the demand of oxygen of the myocardium the nitrates are also uh, vasodilators very good vasodilators and that's why they play a very important role in chronic stable angina and prince metal angina but they have got no role in unstable angina because they uh, the unstable angina patients do not respond to nitrates this could be a diagnostic feature that if the patient is not responding to rest or nitrates we can think of unstable angina and take other me- measures okay 
But if uh, the basic underlying pathology that is the atheromatous plaque, if it is more in size, then we have to uh, go for percut percutaneous coronary intervention that is angioplasty. And if it is a triple vessel disease that uh, that is if the atheroma is present in more than three vessels, more than two vessels or three vessels, then we have to suggest CABG that is coronary artery bypass graft in that particular condition. Okay. So you must remember that angina is a warning sign and it must be dealt with properly in order to prevent the patient from landing into myocardial infarction or death, right? Let us quickly see some MCQs related to uh, this particular topic. In stable angina, uh, what is true? Okay, CKMB that is the creatine phosphokinase MB is elevated, troponin I is elevated, myoglobin is elevated or the levels of cardiac markers remains the same or remains unchanged and the correct answer in this particular question is the levels of cardiac markers remains same it is not elevated okay because this is the main differentiating feature of ischemia and infarction in ischemia the uh, muscle or the heart muscle myocardium has not undergone necrosis or death and therefore, there is no release of cardiac markers. The cardiac markers are released from the necrosed cells. Okay. So, uh, the cardiac markers will increase only in infarction stages. Okay. They can increase to some extent in unstable angina, but it will not be uh, as high as two-fold or three-fold increase in the cardiac markers. Okay. So, which of the following is not true about prince metals angina we have studied the prince metal angina which is not true means three are true one is not true we have got to find that one severe ischemic pain at rest with st segment elevation this is correct because there is a pain at rest and uh, it is the only uh, variant of the angina in which we see st segment elevation so this is correct Focal spasm are common in right coronary artery as we studied in the prince metal angina. This is also correct. Nitrates and calcium channel blockers are mainstay of management. Yeah, because the nitrates and calcium channel blockers, they bring about vasodilatation. And here the basic pathology is vasoconstriction or vasospasm. So nitrates and CCBs are mainstay of management. This is also correct. Aspirin should be administered as soon as diagnosis is made. This is the wrong one and this is our correct answer. Okay, aspirin, aspirin must not be administered in a patient with prince metal angina because uh, what aspirin does is there is a, a substance known as prostocycline which is released automatically which brings about vasodilatation and it uh, inhibits platelet aggregation. But what aspirin does is it inhibits that prostocycline and it uh, further complicates the condition of the prince metal angina by bringing about vasoconstriction. So, aspirin should not be administered in prince metal angina. Okay, we will stop here in this session. I hope you enjoyed the session and you are clear with the concept of angina pectoris. You can... Um, you can uh, subscribe to the plus platform of an academy by using my code. My referral code is Nyanada23, which will allow you to get 10% discount. Okay. I wish you all a very happy learning. We'll meet you soon. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.
I'm Justin Blanca and today we are going to learn about Agile workplace. So, uh, let us start with the lecture. Uh, it's combination and the two corollary articles which originate from Ayurveda, they supply the thread to the myocardium, that is the muscle of the heart. And when there is an imbalance in between the oxygen of the heart or the myocardium and the supply of the blood. Thank you. 